biggest threat to skyscrapers is believing that codes deliver safety. Trusting in the codes, clinging to them like a, a child learning to swim clings to a float in the pool. That's a really dangerous thing to do with skyscrapers. But if you move to a performance-based approach where you're going to prove safety and you think through all the possible permutations and the legacy of the building, then actually that becomes an opportunity for tall buildings. It unlocks tall buildings, it unlocks future potential. So you turn fire safety from a risk, actually, potentially, into an opportunity. When we're talking about resiliency, okay, here is a 3,000-year-old skyscraper. <laughs> so when we talk about lightning, mold, water, drought, fire, wind. There's probably a lot of lessons here that are still there to learn if we just pay attention and look. September 11th and Hurricane Sandy have altered the way we design buildings in regard to security, life safety, and resiliency. From the beginning of the design at World Trade Center, it was important to create an environment that speaks of remembrance while maintaining safety. Architects and engineers need to look at the challenges of today as design opportunities and invent ways to create great civic spaces that are secure, safe, and resilient. You know, one of the key things that, that, that I'm interested in is how long, do we how long should we design these buildings for? You know, what is the life cycle of these buildings? Because here's a staggering fact. I was here last week in Jeddah, and they're building a kilometer high tower in the deserts of Saudi Arabia. We have never dismantled a building higher than 186 meters, other than World Trade Center, which obviously doesn't count. So we're building these buildings, and we have no idea how we're going to take them down. When you talk about doing these buildings on stilts and so forth, how does that also incorporate the vitality of the cities, which is the street life, the pedestrian mode, so to speak? It reminds me a little bit of that a tree analogy that I showed you. It's one thing to build a highly resilient building that may be up in the air. It's a skyscraper where uh, it may actually, in fact, be the safe place to go. But if you can open up the ground plane uh, to what it may be more transient uh, infrastructure that's not meant to last as long. And so uh, I'll, I'll use maybe some extremes. If you put a tower up in the air, but it opens up the ground plane, it may be down to tents and, and food court trucks or other very temporary elements that if there is a hazard, it's easier to repair. And there may actually be an easy combination between the two where you can create a great urban fabric down at the base. And if it's subject to a flood or condition, it's easy to come back and fix it. Are we ever truly going to be able to make a tall building safe from somebody who is intent on harming the occupants. And, and really, controversially, should we even be trying? So I think you know, one of the things that I've learned, um, having been working on tall buildings my entire career, um, all in New York, is that I, I don't think that you could ever, ever get to a point where you could say that there is, there is no way. I mean, there, if somebody wants to harm a building, they'll, they'll find a way. But I think that certainly over the last, you know, uh, 15 plus years, buildings have definitely gotten safer. Um, there's all kinds of, you know, cameras that people, you know, weren't patrolling. There's you walk into buildings today. There's uh, security presence. There's parcel screeners. So these look like small measures, but they're actually doing a lot in terms of protecting the buildings. And um, so I think there's a lot of things that people don't realize, and so tall buildings have become a lot safer. Um, that's, I think, one of the inherent problems we have with building codes, is they're built on the failures of the past, the stuff that we know has gone wrong before, that's where we tend to design building codes. Um, and then, if you're lucky a little bit, thinking, ah, but this might happen. But the people who design tall buildings, um, the people who commission tall buildings, are forever coming up with new ideas for tall buildings. You know, they're very expensive objects. People like them to be unique. They like them to be special and they're constantly pushing the boundaries in ways that, that we can't actually predict. Um, and that's where I, I sort of touched it very lightly, the idea of using probabilistic methods starts to become quite interesting. Now, fortunately, on structure, we, we look at very low probabilities for collapse prevention and earthquakes. We look at like a 2% in a 50-year earthquake. Um, that's the event that happens maybe once every 2,500 years. Uh, so we are looking way out there at a lot bigger events, but I, I think we should be talking mindsets of 100 years at least. Uh, in, in Europe, that may sound really trite, but something other than a 50-year time 
time frame seems like something we might want to talk about on these, these biggest infrastructure projects. I, I mean, actually, I, I, I would add to that. I think we need to design these buildings forever. And, and, and if we did that, it would be a completely different mindset because then you would be designing a building for multiple phases of life that some of which we don't yet know.